Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, in today's video, we're going to be making a wood and metal bed frame. It's going to be consisting of... <laughs> uh, a foot that... <laughs> All right, one more time, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video, we're gonna be making a metal and wood bed frame. It's gonna have a footboard and a headboard. Let's get started on today's video. All right, well, if I can't get the intro right, you can only imagine how the rest of the video or the rest of this project is gonna go. You guys bear with me. I've been sick for the last few days. My voice might be a little bit scratchy, but uh, uh, we'll be able to get through this. You guys ever, you ever have these projects where you, from the very beginning, you have nothing but problems and it never stops to the very end? Well, this is one of those. This is one of those projects. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get them and you just seem to not be able to get around all the problems that, that, that happen. So the first thing I'm doing right here is uh, cutting the material to length. And I'm using some 1x2 rectangular tubing. Now this is 063 wall thickness, about a 16th of an inch thick. And I'm cutting everything to length. And then I am uh, deburring everything over the Burr King right here. The next thing I like to do, you know, from my, from my metal supply store, uh, at least the one that I go to, maybe they're all this way. Uh, the material comes with a, a, a thin coating of, of oil or grease or whatever it is that's on there. And um, I just like to wipe everything down with acetone, get everything nice and clean. It, it just makes for a better job, at least for me that way. All right, so this is the first part of the, um, the metal bed frame. This is the footboard that I'm working on right here. You can see I've got my table dogs on there just squaring everything up. And... Uh, and welding everything together on this footboard part. And we're operating off of the HTP Pro Pulse 220 MTS here today. I'm running 30 thousandths wire, 90-10, argon, 10% CO2. And I like to run my CFH right at about 20. That seems to be the best for me. My wire feed speed on this machine right here is about 240 inches a minute. All right, once I got this done, I like to go around and, uh, and, and grind my wells down and make everything nice and smooth, at least the ones that are accessible, the ones that are going to be seen. And I'm using a 120 grit flap disc. All my abrasives are from Mercer Industries uh, that I use for, for all my projects right here. They've got a wide variety of, of abrasives over there. All right, so what we're doing, if you take notice, um, I've got the 1x2 rectangular tubing on the outside frame standing up on end. On the inside, I've got the 1x2 laying flat, and there's reasons for that, and you'll see that later on in the video. But uh, I'm just going around and uh, getting everything welded in on the footboard part right here and just finishing up the, uh, the grinding. All right, this is the headboard, and it's basically the, the same process, just clamping everything down and welding it up. It's obviously a little bit bigger uh, because it's going to be taller on the back. You know, working with the, the sort of flat welding table and the fixture clamps and everything right here, I can't say enough about how everything is uh, so much easier to work with. And you see me checking for square just a minute ago. I can't help myself. I keep checking myself for square thinking that for sure I'm going to have a problem like I used to before I had this table and stuff. But no, ever since I've had it and I'm working the way where I work with this stuff, I, everything is perfectly square all the time. It's, uh, it's really, really fun to work with. All right, you can see I've got the same process right here. Um, the headboard, the rectangular tubing up on the end, the internal pieces uh, are laying flat. And this is what's going to hold the wood in place, um, the flat stuff on the outside. This is just the look that the client was looking for. You know, they had showed me a picture of something. They said, you know, we want to have a metal and wood bed frame. We don't know what we want. Uh, they showed me a couple of in images, and I kind of, you know, put something together in my head and, and, and kind of went with what I'm going with. They're fine with whatever I'm doing. They're, they're really easy to work with. So uh, they said, whatever you do, I'm sure we're going to like it. So it's kind of fun working with clients that, uh, you know, they have a, a good relationship that, uh, that they're going to be okay with whatever you do. And everything I do is I build as I go, as you guys know. So you know, we're all learning together right here. If there's a lot of mistakes, which there were on this project, by the way, tons of mistakes. Uh, you're just not seeing all of them. It just, uh, 
Um, it definitely is a learning process. All right, so I've got the uh, headboard put together right here. And then the footboard, and I'm just going to clamp everything down um, on my table right here. And uh, it's time to start putting these side rails in. Now, my original plan for this was um, to just put a couple pieces of angle iron on there, run a couple screws in there, and then call it good. Uh, but the more I thought about it, uh, the more I thought that, you know, maybe that's not really the best way to do it. You know, if we put this thing together and take it apart, whoever does it, and and uh, uh, they do that a couple of times, maybe the screws, you know, we're dealing with screws, and I don't want to lose a bunch of screws, and I don't know, maybe they're going to come loose. I don't know what, but uh, um, I decided that that really wasn't the way I wanted to go, and then I want to come up with a different system. So after about three days of thinking about this, and I'm not kidding, literally three days, I looked over this thing and tried to figure out a way uh, to put this together that was going to be more of like a clamp uh, or a latching system. And uh, so that's what I tried to do. So this is the first of many parts, and uh, I'm going to have nothing but problems with this, uh, as you may see here in a minute. Uh, it just, uh, this one here wasn't too bad, but I don't know what was happening. There was tons of contamination. You know, I ground all this down, cleaned it with acetone. I don't know what was going on. I didn't have a good airflow mixture. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, uh, things weren't working right uh, nevertheless i got through this part right here now because i got four rails two rails on each side and i've got this is eight pieces uh eight corners that are all different so every one of these brackets have to be different than the other nothing can be the same so I'm starting out with this one right here. This is the very first one. And, uh, you know, my plan was, okay, so this is like a, a little bracket that this piece right here ultimately will slip into. All right, that'll take care of the weight transfer going down. So we're not going to have any issues of that pushing down. So, like I said, it was just a step-by-step -step process going through here trying to figure out how things are going to work. And for the other side, I had to make a little uh, bracket here out of this one by to material to fill in the void corner to get it flush to the outside starting to get a little bulky looking here but uh, you know all of this is to the inside and you're never going to see it once the mattresses are in there that's what I kept telling myself anyway uh, the more the more times I kept doing anything and adding these brackets it's starting to get more and more bulkier but you know what there's probably tons of ways of doing this uh, this is just the way that I came up with, and I'm sure that if you guys were doing something, you'd be, have a different way of doing it, and maybe an easier way, I don't know. But uh, this is what I'm going with here, and uh, at the end of the day, I, I think it's going to work out pretty good. All right, so this is where I had nothing but, well, this is one of the major problems that you're actually going to see. You can see that it just blew up. It's almost like I dipped the tungsten right here, but I can assure you I did not. There was some contamination going on that jumped up on my tungsten and just trashed it. Um, but uh and you can see i'm just going to try to give it a give it a shot here and it just got worse from that point on and uh you know that's just one of the problems that i had during this whole process right here well you can see that uh i got a conglomeration of uh, angle brackets spacers pieces uh, everything going on right there and uh but it's starting to work okay that works pretty good there so that's going to hold it in now i need to have a piece on the outside right here and this little piece is going to stop it from going out so it kind of locks itself in right there all right so i'm pretty okay with that and so on the other side i did the same thing got a little piece of angle iron so now i'm locked in on the bottom and then i'm locked in the side so it really can't go anywhere all right so that's one reel down and uh three more to go and like I said, every single one of them was slightly different in, in their own way, uh, you know, because uh, each 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 section was was different thicknesses, and uh, it just had to have a different application. You know, sometimes I'm thinking maybe I should have just went with the angle iron and screws. It would have been a lot faster and a lot easier, and probably never would have had any issues with it. But uh, nope, I've always got to do something different right here, and uh, and you know, but nevertheless, it's working out pretty good despite all the little small little pieces and details that I had to go through here. All right, so that latch is in there. That's pretty good. Looks like a crazy bunch of stuff there. This one latches down and tightens in right there. And then the top piece, it buttons down there. And the other side, it just snaps down and it's in place right there. So that's what I come up with. 
And then here are the pieces or what they look like, all the little pieces that I had to fabricate to make things happen. You can just see there's just tons of little pieces right there. It was, it's really ridiculous, but uh, it got out of hand. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm into it now, so I'm going with it. So you'd think that the second one, if you did one and it worked out pretty good, you feel you got a pretty good grip on the second one. They're, they're similar in pieces, but uh, yeah, here I go right here here's the, here's another problem i welded the bracket in the wrong spot right there and anyways i had to cut that off regroup all right now that's back where that needs to be and everything's fitting okay and so now i'm just going to go ahead and you know weld these things out where i can weld them out and hopefully i'm not going to weld the wrong one again it's very easy to make a mistake trust me you got so many little pieces all right so here we go i'm Moving along here pretty good and thinking that everything is going good and uh, I'm checking for adjustment. Everything is everything is so far looking pretty good. All right, lining up really good. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. All right, let me just go ahead and get this thing tacked in right here. All right, let me get my angle iron piece on the bottom right here and clamp that in. You know, tons of pieces. I'm thinking I'm more focused on the outside to be sure things are lining up. All right, I'm going to get this welded in. All right, does it work? Ah, yeah, it seems to work pretty good. All right, great. Let's start welding it in. All right, so I'm welding this all in, getting everything done, thinking everything is working pretty good. Let me get this thing. Let me weld that all the way around. All right, perfect, great. And it was someplace in right about here where I decided that something's not right. So I pre-made all these parts. I showed you guys all of that. And during the course of putting this all together, um, I made a mistake. And the mistake is, I made one of many mistakes, but this is the mistake we're dealing with now, is on this rail, this piece right here is the piece that is designed for the top rail. This piece right here is the piece that is designed for the bottom rail right here. But because this thing works so good and it's locked in and it's definitely serving its purpose, I thought I'll just leave this thing and uh, and I'll just make another part for the top up here. Well, I slept on that overnight and decided it was just bothering me so much I just can't deal with it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this bottom rail off, I'm going to cut this piece off, I'll be able to use this on the top piece and I'm going to put the right piece on here and hopefully we're going to move forward in a positive note. Now I'm about three quarters away, almost completely done with this uh, metal part of the frame and we'll be moving on to the wood. So let's get this thing swapped out and uh, hopefully we'll be moving forward on this project on a positive note. Yep, so that is the mistake right there. So, you know, luckily, you know, as easy as things weld together, they come apart just as easy with a little bit of a grinder on there couple grinds and that thing will pop right off of there clean it up put the new piece on you're back in business sometimes that happens faster it's faster to cut it off and fix it than it is to originally get the thing welded on in the first place that wasn't too bad it didn't take too long i'm glad i did it because i probably would have never never felt the same if i'd never fixed it and then top piece just cleaned up real easy and i was back in business however i did make a mistake and welded that another mistake yet and yeah, welded that thing where it's supposed to be. Not where it's supposed to be, I should say. Grind it off. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was just one mistake after another. But uh, hey, nevertheless, you live and you learn. I got a ratchet strap right here on this last little piece. I'm just pulling it in. Be sure everything fits nice and snug. You can see that uh, you know that latched in there. Make a few more adjustments right there. Of course, I welded that in the wrong spot again. You think you'd learn, but no, I keep I keep welding the wrong pieces on. But it's an easy fix. All right, well, there it is. I finally, I finally was able to get the metal portion of this thing put together after about two and a half weeks and a lot of frustration. Uh, but nevertheless, we're, we're going to be moving forward here. You know, the important thing about this right here is, uh, is uh, I just wanted the outside edges to be looking nice and flush. And uh, that's, that was the goal, and that's what I came up with right here. Uh, like I said, when the mattress is in there, you're not going to see those brackets on the inside. You're just going to be seeing what's going on the outside. And, you know, for me, uh, I got some satisfaction out of that, knowing that it turned out just the way I was, uh, I was hoping, hoping it would. 
All right, so after all that, we're going to take these things apart. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that was discussed uh, with the client is they wanted this metal look and they wanted the wood look. They didn't really want to do anything to the metal. But when I explained to them, hey, if I leave it the way it is, when I grind the outside edges, you're, you're going to see some uh, grind, you know, buff marks on the outside. Uh, maybe I can do something to kind of blend that in. So this is what I decided to do is uh, I've got a metal... Uh, uh, preparation disc here a surface preparation disc i should say on my on my angle grinder and that just kind of goes and kind of puts a slight little sanding if you will on the metal all the way around and you know that worked out pretty good it kind of blended that in a little bit and i was i was okay with that and then i grabbed some uh um scotch bright right here this is the purple scotch bright i think this is the more coarse than the green and i was able to go around and hand sand everything and that was even a better look well i'm not certain it was worth it um i probably spent oh i want to say two days going through this process of sanding everything down i mean every single piece of 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 the iron backside front side everywhere and then taking the scotch bright and going over and hand sanding everything the way you see I'm doing right here. And oh, like I said, I don't know that I, I don't know that it would be any different if you just took some steel wool or just some scotch bright initially, or maybe even some sandpaper and just hit it really lightly with sandpaper. That whole thing could have been probably done in, in, in 20 minutes or something. Uh, but, uh, no, I elected to go the route that I went. And, uh, once I realized that, uh, I was in it, I couldn't change it. And I had to finish, finish doing it the way I was doing it because the look would have been different. So that is what I did and just stayed with it and got it done. You know, took the surface preparation wheel, hit every single corner, took the scotch bright and just went around and hand sanded every single piece. Nevertheless, I got it done, and uh, hey, it was a lot of work, but it uh, it all turned out pretty evenly. All right, so once I got all that done, uh, that left a, a lot of uh, dust and debris on there, so I uh, wiped everything down with acetone again, and I got everything nice and clean, and I am going to be putting some clear lacquer on the top of all of this. Uh, you know, in the past, I've used some clear polyurethane. They've said that that's not really uh, designed for metal i used it anyway i didn't have any issues with it uh but this uh this stuff right here clear lacquer is uh they said it's acceptable for metal and uh, that's what i you see me putting it on there put a couple coats of this on just spraying it on you know the idea even though it's going to be inside the house there and it is metal i wanted to have some sort of protection against you know i was just couldn't help to think that well eventually this thing might rust some way somehow and if i had some sort of a coating on it yeah, that might uh, help prevent that. So that's what I'm doing right here. And hopefully that's uh, that's what happens. It's got uh, some protective coating on it. All right, well, with that done, uh, I'm just going to assemble this thing back again. And we're going to start uh, putting the wood on. And of course, wouldn't you know it, you know, I got four pieces to put on. I can't find a single one to the right side here. Uh, of course, you grab one. It's definitely not the right one. Why should, why should things change now into this project? I'm, nothing is going right. Ultimately got it all put together, and now it is time to uh, start working on the wood part of the steel. Now this is some three-quarter inch birch wood that I'm using on this. Uh, this is, uh, we took, got some test samples of this. Got some stain, stained it up. Uh, really like the way it looked. So this is what we're using. All right, and you can see I got my table saw table on there, and you might see that it's a little offset to my workbench. I, I built this and designed to go on my workbench so I can have an outfeed table on here uh, for long boards like this. This is the only way that I have. I don't. It's the only table saw that I have, and then I've got a long uh, fence right there made out of some one by three aluminum, and uh, that acts as a, uh, a fence uh, for cutting some long boards actually works out pretty good the reason why i had to offset uh, my table onto the workbench right here is when i rearranged my shop i ended up you know my welding table and you can see my vice sitting over there well it was in the way so i had to move the table off center to, in order to get the long boards through there i don't do a lot of woodworking but uh you know i just got to make do with what i have 
All right, so this is some uh, some quarter inch sanded plywood. Now I've only got three quarter of an inch wood, and then I need to make up an inch because uh, the material I'm using is one by two. So this is the quarter inch that I need to glue to the back. That's going to make an even one inch, and that's how I'm going to mount this stuff to be flush to the inside of the frame. All right, so with the boards cut, this is the headboard, and I want to glue everything together here on the headboard. Uh, it's just three boards uh, glued together right here. And we're going to clamp that up. We're going to let that sit. Using some tight bond glue right here. And um, this is the blue bottle. I think that's water resistant. I've got the green bottle and I didn't have any red. That's the original. That would have been acceptable. But uh, uh, the blue will be just fine. All right. I'm cutting these side rails to length right here. Again, using my DeWalt. This is a fairly new compound miter saw that I've gotten. It's uh, working pretty good. No complaints there. After I totally launched my Bosch, my mistake there, bent the table, bent everything on that, ruined a saw, ruined a $600 saw. But uh, anyways, that's another story. All right, so I'm just gluing this stuff on and uh, just using some 5 8 brads, uh, kind of nailing that in place. Uh, so now with three quarters of an inch and a quarter inch back here on there, that gives me an inch and that's uh, going to match the thickness of the uh, metal railing. All right, so with those done, I'm just kind of working back and forth right here. Uh, the glue is dried, so now I need to get all that glue uh, sanded off and, and try to work on the finish here of this headboard. Now, this is some 60 grit right here that I'm using to, to rough it in, take that off, and then I'm going to some 120, and then I'm finishing up with some uh, 240. Now, in the past, I've used... Uh, uh, more finer grit than that, but I've had you know a lot of my viewers uh, chime in and they say, hey, you don't really need to go any more than 240. That's uh, that's more than enough. Um, you know, I appreciate all the comments. You know, hey, I just do what I, I just do what I do. I don't know everything about everything, but uh, I I do get some really good information from you guys out there, and I put it to use uh, whenever I can. And I appreciate that. All right, so with this sanded down, and by the way, I sanded down to 240, and that was a nice smooth finish. I just took my uh, palm uh, router and just put a nice eighth-inch rounding over bit on there. Went a little overboard on the glue right here, but uh, that's no problem. We'll get that scooped off there and cleaned up. And then uh, stick the backer board on there. Get it nice and square. Get some brads in there. And then just finishing up the rounding over on the side rails. And then finish up the sanding. You see that board's got a warp in it. And I was really concerned that that was going to be a problem um, in the side rail. Uh, but it didn't pose to be a problem. It uh, straightened right out since we got it uh, fastened in there. All right. So I'm using this uh, uh, gel stain. I believe this is from General Finishes. You know, it's available on Amazon. And uh, they got all kinds of different products over there. And uh, this stain right here, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with gel stain, but man, it, in my opinion, it is so much better than regular stain. Uh, the finish is, the finish is just that much better, cleaner. It goes on smoother, and I think it's just a better look and a and a better finish altogether. All right. Well, with all the staining done, uh, and got that all out of the way. And one thing I f forgot about, and that is putting. Um, the rails on the inside to support the box spring mattress you know i got carried away with everything over the last two and a half weeks making this metal frame that i forgot all about this so it's no problem this is some one inch by two inch aluminum and i'm just screwing this to the very bottom and this is going to support the box spring now, those of you guys who don't know a box spring mattress it's got a square frame around it with springs on the inside and then you put your regular mattress on top of that and then that's what's going to hold this aluminum uh, angle is going to hold that frame around the perimeter and the reason why i'm not using uh you know regular mild steel um, like the rest of the project here is i um i couldn't it wasn't available to me the one inch by uh two inch by eighth inch uh, angle wasn't available at least at the metal supply store that i go to so i alternated for aluminum i don't think that's a problem at all i think it's going to be just fine all right, so these are the brackets that I'm ultimately going to be using on the side rails. It's going to be holding the side rails into place. Uh, just cut them to the right length and then just kind of round it over the edges a little bit. And, of course, I'm overdoing everything. Uh, you know, I started with, uh, maybe I'll just put two screws top and bottom and maybe a couple in the center. No, nah, maybe I'll add a couple more screws. Well, I should drill a couple more holes. Next thing you know, I got just tons of holes and it's just way overkill but uh 
Like I said, I'm in it now. I'm not going to turn back. Just get it done. You can just see I'm using the first one as a template for the rest of them. Not real important, but you do want them to look uh, like they're somewhat uniform. One thing I know is this uh, this bed frame will be along, around a lot longer than me, my kids, and my grandkids. The way this thing is built. But man, I tell you, there's nothing like having it heavy duty. I love, uh, love it strong. Well, this is just another one of my problems uh, that I had here, uh, of one of many. Uh, I'm trying to put this bracket on. This is the first one. And, of course, it's not going on. And, of course, it's not squared. And on the very bottom, you see it's not sitting on top of the angle iron. It's kind of overlapping. I didn't see that at this point. And, no, I got to drill all. I got to get all the screws in there before I realize I made the mistake. Of course, can't get anything in, stripping the screws out, you know, just one thing after another. I mean, why should it change at this point? <laughs> all right, I realized what I did there. I got them backed out and uh, straightened back up, and we're back in business. So 10 screws, six in the middle, two on the top, two on the bottom. That's probably six too many, but uh, hey, nevertheless, uh, more is better. Big is better, I guess. So I'm putting them in there, spacing them out. Like I said, four brackets each side. And then you can see I've got the two. Uh, they're in about three inches from either side. And then I'm splitting the difference with the other two right here. And uh, I, I got to say, um, not knowing how this is coming together and, and me building as I go right here, uh, things at this point are starting to work out uh, just the way I was, I was hoping they would. I mean, the wood fit in there really nice, nice and clean. Uh, nice and tight and pulled together nice and smooth and that's kind of just what I was hoping for all right so I just repeated the same process on the other side convenience of me being able to sit on my table and sticking my legs through I gotta tell you that's that's a relief being able to work comfortable uh, I couldn't imagine me uh, trying to get this done uh, uh, leaning over the top or or anything like that so this worked out a lot better than the first one everything is going in there nice and smooth all right, so for the headboard, it's a little bit different. You know, I'm using some angle iron. I'm using three brackets right here. This is one inch by one inch angle iron. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that over the uh, over the um, two inch by eighth inch flat bar stock is I was afraid it might be, this is a two foot span, a little bit more than a two foot span. And I was afraid that, uh, you know, it, it might uh, still bow through the, you know, the distance might be too tall and might bow through. And I knew that the angle iron would be much more rigid and uh, it probably hold everything straight so it doesn't really matter because that is recessed in the back side of the headboard and it is up against the wall so you're not going to see it and uh, this actually worked pretty good for me all right just going to slip this one right in and like like the others so far it's a super tight fit and you can see that uh, that fits in there really tight just a couple of a uh, couple of taps with uh, uh, the dead blow hammer right there to pull everything in that fit in there pretty good. You know, I think of those knots. You can see I got a knot right there, and I got some knots on the other stuff. I'm just trying to add a little character to the wood. Uh, not having everything perfect, you know, is okay. I kind of like that. And then just using some screws right here to hold it in place. These are self-tapping screws, but I did assist them a little bit by pre-drilling uh, these ones right here and uh, seemed to work um, a lot better. Even though I did do a lot of the self-tapping screws without pre-drilling on this project, that worked pretty good too. But uh, pre-drilling them seems to work a little bit better. This is the uh, footboard, and also it's a different application. I'm using some one-inch angle iron on this as well, top and bottom. Uh, that's just the way I had to have it. That's the way it was going to work on this particular one. The straps wouldn't work because the bar is um, laying flat. You can see that. So again, a tight fit. And then just the last couple screws right here uh, to button it up. And this project is over. I'm finally done with it. You know, with all the trouble that I had, and you just saw some of the mistakes, I guarantee you there was a lot more than that. Um, it turned out pretty good. It took me about two and a half weeks longer than I thought I was going to. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Well, I hope so. That's if I don't get a project that's going to take three and a half weeks to do. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.